and it, it's going to be an interesting program for all of us. And I, I like you to pay attention to relax and let's dish out all the beautiful things we have prepared for you and all the beautiful things you're going to share. We are going to share together. Next slide, please. So for the organizers, we have the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the parent body, the education, Wikimedia and Education User Group, and EduWiki Nigeria, who are organizers of this great program. Look, you are waiting. Okay. So for the host and co-host. My name is Obi Ezilo. I'm a certified trainer, reading Wikipedia in the classroom, co-founder, Eduwiki Nigeria. And my co-host is going to be Kemi Makinde, also a certified trainer, reading Wikipedia in the classroom, communicate some strategies for Eduwiki Nigeria. Hello, Buki, are you still there? Mm -hmm. So the purpose of this Edu Wiki, the purpose of this Edu Wiki Knowledge Showcase is to celebrate uh, the Edu Wiki community, our contributions to the Wiki space, especially with reference to open education. We want to focus, focusing on educational engagement using Wikipedia. It's also a platform to invite all Edu Wikimedians to share our wonderful educational projects and initiative, including research. It's also going to be a platform where we network among each other, irrespective of who we are. This network cuts across countries regions and individuals. And we also, uh, in networking, we are gaining insight into diverse educational opportunities and initiatives. It's also going to be a platform or the purpose of this Edu Wiki Knowledge Showcase is to encourage community collaborations through showcasing interactions of Wikimedians and education. Next slide, please. Now for our agenda, we're already here, we've already checked in. We'll do a brief introduction of our participants and especially our presenters. Then friendly space policy, which is one of the main icons of Wikipedia family. Then we have icebreakers, we have so many presentations. We have up to eight presentations, but the times are specified there. And we, at the end, we are going to have a question and answers. Now, our participation principles. If we have any doubts, we can ask questions, whether new or old. We want to have active participation and it has to be open. We have to, we have to strive to support one another and be respectful in our question, in our learnings and in our interactions with one another. We have to listen with attention and respect. Now let's start with our first icebreaker by Zainab Ibrahim. Zainab is from Matrix International Academy, Gombe in Nigeria. Gombe is a state in Nigeria. 
she'll be presenting her poem to us. Please let's pay attention. Oh, I I heard um many people say they couldn't hear this. We can't hear. Yes, we can't hear her. Oh, sorry. Um, how do I share now? Can I do maybe full screen? Can Can you hear her? No. Is it audible? Not it's yet. Not okay, okay, you have to share. Okay. Good day, everybody. My name is Zainab Awonke Ibrahim. I'm going to present a poem titled Open Education. Access, opportunity, and equity. Those are the words that we need. Something that can fix a nation. That is open education. Mm. A way people build our knowledge and work on the bridge of success. A chance to have opportunity and a way to find equity in this society. For the people who don't have the possibility of getting the resources, for those who don't have the odds of acquiring these learning experiences, a likelihood of succeeding dreams, a likeness of finding a way to fix this community, a possibility of greatly impacting someone's style of living, a chance, a way, and a probability. These are possibilities of learning. A system Sorry, that changes uh, our That's hear? open education. Thank okay. you. Yes, we are hearing her. Okay. Yes. You've paused the video. Good day. Everybody. My name is Zainab Awonke Ibrahim. I'm going to present a poem titled Open Education. Access, opportunity, and equity. Those are the words that we need. Something that can fix a nation. That is open education. A way people build our knowledge and work on the bridge of success. A chance to have opportunity and a way to find equity in this society. For the people who don't have the possibility of getting the resources, for those who don't have the odds of acquiring these learning experiences, a likelihood of succeeding dreams, a likeness of finding a way to fix this community, a possibility of greatly impacting someone's style of living, a chance, a way, and a probability. These are possibilities of learning, a system that changes a nation. That's open education. Thank you. Good day, everybody. My name is Wow, that's very interesting. At least we've now heard her own opinion and poem on open education. Thank you very much, Zainab. To move forward, I would like to introduce our presenters. We have eight presenters from across the globe. We have from Nigeria from Germany, from Germany, from Brazil, from Greece, from Tanzania, and from Philippines. Our first speaker is Al-Hassan Mohamed Awal. Al-Hassan Mohamed Awal 
is the communication manager for the Dabwani Wikimedia user group. If Mr. Al Hassan Mohammed is here, please. Can you unmute yourself and talk to us? He's going to talk to us on all the activities that has to do with Dabani user group, user group, sorry, both present and past. Okay. okay. I'm made to understand that he's not on the call. Okay. Let's move on to the next speaker. Zico Van Dijk. Zico Van Dijk is a German born who lives in Netherlands. He is co founder of the Klesekon a children encyclopedia in Germany. And he is a consultant and is currently serving as the secretary of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Hello, Zico, are you on the call? Hello, okay. thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Does it work? Yes, wonderful. Yes. Thank yes. you for, for the introduction, very kind of you. And yes, welcome to this little uh, presentation. Uh, I, I just sent the PDF to Silish. Do you, do you have the presentation, the slides, Silish? Can be just a question. Yes, wonderful. So I'm Zico van Dijk, your friendly neighborhood Wikipedian, and I'm working on a video series for YouTube how to present Wikipedia, how to prepare a talk, how to select suitable topics. And I would like to give you some examples here. Next slide. So our plan for the next 20 to 25 minutes is help and email the most difficult media format, my favorite tips. We will see how much time we have for them. And then a little story about the embarrassing uh, memories you can have in 20 years. Let's start. Next slide, please. Help an email. As I said, I'm working on a video series on the subject of how to present Wikipedia. At the moment, I'm still writing my script. I uh, want to translate it later to English. And now I have for about 10 chapters that will be like 10 videos. We will see. And at the beginning, I would like to introduce the following question. Imagine you are an activist for Wikipedia or for a Wikimedia organization, and you receive an email from the chairman of a cultural organization. This is a local association for the culture and history of the region. So the email of the chairman says the following. Next slide, please. Hello, people from Wikipedia. I have a request. We're here at the association think Wikipedia is great, and we all want to learn how to write articles. Can you send someone to teach us? We meet every Wednesday evening in the Culture, Culture Center, Center. Let's make an appointment for a course. Okay, how do you react on an email like this? Please write briefly and spontaneously in the chat what would you answer? Just a few words, spontaneously, how to react on such an email. I'm watching the chat, people are writing. Okay, F friendly, friendly respond, yes. I'm waiting a couple of seconds, sir. You are still writing. Ah, okay, official, yes.
Hey, Anthony also writes something. Consider it. Yes, support you. Great. Delighting about the interest. Very good wording. Yes, thinking about a schedule. Wonderful. Oops, the presentation uh, disappeared. Can you put it on, please, again? Yep, you could just give me a second, please. Yeah. Okay, these were some uh, great uh, responses. Well, I think the most important thing to say is that you don't say, yes, I'll come and give you the course. Instead, think about what this person actually wants and whether you can do it. And I suspect that the chairman knows very little about Wikipedia. He doesn't know what you can do in Wikipedia. He can only imagine writing articles and he doesn't know how complicated it is. So in a situation like this, it's better to return questions and then you can find out what kind of organization it is, what the members like to do and what opportunities there are. Next slide, please. It's number five. So my guess is the best thing you can do is not to prepare a course. Instead, I, you can suggest an information evening. You can give a 45-minute presentation at the meeting, and there you introduce Wikipedia and explain how easy or difficult it is to take part. And after the presentation, the members can ask questions. So I suspect if you make this suggestion to the chairman of the association, he will be pleased because that's exactly what makes sense for the association in this moment. So, and if there is later more interest after such an information meeting, then you can always discuss with the asso association whether a course is worthwhile. So, wonderful uh, answers of you, exactly that I would do, but first I would ask the questions. The next slide, please is about the most difficult media format. So we are all familiar with various media formats like forms of presentation, forms of teaching, but let's talk about the most difficult media format there is, and even the champions of Wikipedia can easily fail on this. Next slide. And this media format is called small talk. Yes, small talk, that's a kind of conversation when you meet someone for the first time. This is also a specific media format, and you have to ask yourself beforehand, what are your goals and what are the constraints? So in other words, what things can you not do in this format? So that's why I ask you, imagine that you are asked during a small talk, Wikipedia, what are you doing with Wikipedia? So then, Think what is your goal and what are your constraints. Please write it down in the chat. Concisely, spontaneously, it doesn't have to be very long, but I'm, well, interested about what are your goals in small talk. People are still typing, I suppose. So what are your goals in small talk? What do you want to achieve? And what are things that you cannot really do in a small talk? Hmm, I still don't see any, any answers. Ah, yeah. Okay, information literacy in respect to con contributing to Wikipedia. Okay. Oh, what what here what are you doing? Yes, but I was asking more abstract. What are your goals? What do you want to achieve with the small talk? Have you tried reading an article on it? Okay, yes. So going on with the conversation, wonderful. I give it uh, a couple of seconds and I go on then, yes. Stay on the slide, please. Okay, interesting. So I'll say it very explicitly. 
Oh, yes, what you are doing, do. Yes. Oh, what Bukula says will become uh, important later. Very interesting. So let me tell you explicitly what is the goal of small talk. That is a conversation that is about any that isn't about anything important. So the topics should be harmless. And so the most important thing of a small talk is that you want to calibrate the expectations. So in a small talk, it is not so much about that you give facts or information. But it's about what kind of person are you and how you react normally in a conversation, what people can expect from you. Next slide, please. And so to give you an example, the weather. So the weather, um, let's imagine you and the other person, you are from the same culture. And in your culture, uh, weather is a harmless topic and rainy days are considered bad days and sunny days are considered good and let's also assume that it is it is raining today when the small talk takes place next slide please so you have the choice you can say whatever you want to this harmless question option a what a stupid rainy day it is again i hate it so much or your op option b can be oh it's quite rainy today but I'm sure the sun will, sh will shine soon again. So what would you say in the small talk? Well, I think uh, it is clear which answer is the socially acceptable one. And by the way, oh yes, and uh, if we have an example with Wikipedia, so imagine that you are asked, why are you participating in Wikipedia? And then you can answer, Option A, there are so many idiots on Wikipedia who don't understand spelling. It's good that someone is cleaning up it from time to time. Or you can say option B, Wikipedia is useful for many people. I contribute to Wikipedia to help others. And that last option, of course, is the socially acceptable one. So small talk is not about giving a lot of information, but it is about building up a kind of social relation appropriate social relation with the other person and then the person knows whether the person wants to work with you if it is a pleasant person to walk to work with you so and by the way all these things you don't have to answer spontaneously in such situations you can expect what people are going to ask whether in small talk or in any other format these are predict 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 predictable questions what are you doing with wikipedia so that's why that you can prepare for them in advance so uh, you think about your goal and what sentences you are going to say and then of course it's especially hello i'm sorry i don't understand <laughs> do you have the Yes, leave this leave this slide. It's great. So, and of course, it's especially great if you can say all these sentences that you have prepared as naturally as if you hadn't learned them by heart beforehand. So now we start with the quiz. Thank you. About a quiz. Small talk is difficult. Longer media formats are also difficult. And let's say I'm presenting Wikipedia in a lecture for people who know very little about it. At the beginning of my presentation, I want to give some basic background information about Wikipedia. And I can tell something in an encyclopedic way. I present a fact-oriented text, but it can also be done with a little quiz. Again, I have to ask myself beforehand, beforehand what I actually want to achieve with the quiz. Please take a look at the following four questions with possible answers. Next slide, please. And please don't write anything in the chat yet. Read and listen first. So this is the first possible question for a quiz. When was Wikipedia founded and then the year? Next slide, please. Question number two, who owns Wikipedia? The people who write it, the American government, a nonprofit organization or a surprisingly small company? Next slide, please. Question number three. Who writes the texts in Wikipedia? Volunteers, full-time employees, freelancers, or automated programs like an arti artificial intelligence? And next slide. Question number four. How are the Wikipedia texts 
licensed. So dual licensed public domain for the text photos are protected by a license or Wikipedia has its own license or all Wikipedia content is the property of the website owner. Yes, thank you. So now I want uh, to ask you, which of these questions are suitable? Please write down the number or the numbers in the chat. So which question would you take? Uh, could you take the next slide, please? So which of the questions would you ask in a quiz? All of them, okay. Ah, not the fourth one, the, the three about who writes the text. Okay, interesting. Yes. Starting the conversation, very good, yes. I think number three is quite uh, appreciated. Okay, I, I look at the time and I, I, I let, let me go through these questions. Yes, what I want to like to say. So the number one, for example, I don't find that good because it is about factual knowledge. When Wikipedia was founded in most contexts, the exact year is not important. And it is enough to say that Wikipedia is over 20 years old. So I would not include that question. Number two. Who owns Wikipedia is a very good question because it often comes up in workshops and lectures and ma many people really don't know. But if I ask people in a workshop, you know, we ask them, please write articles for Wikipedia. I think then they should know who owns the site. And it is also a good question to think about and make a good guess, even if you don't know the exact answer. And the last one uh, about, uh, sorry, Oops. Yes, and the last one, no, sorry, I was uh, number three, yeah, who, who writes the text. It is also uh, useful, and it may depend on your presentation and the audience. And all of those questions I just told you, yeah, who, who writes the text, is it artificial intelligence? All those questions I have already heard from audience members. Most people can't understand why English Wikipedia became so huge. And Wikipedia founder Jimmy Wales, he was asked, asked, and he replied jokingly, I can type really fast. And the last one about the licenses of Wikipedia text, I wouldn't include that. Most people don't know that. It's very complicated. I think that the topic is very important, copyright licenses, but I wouldn't introduce it as a quiz question. Next slide, please. So what are my goals? I'm doing a quiz to loosen things up, to interact with the attendees, but I'm also interested honestly in their answers so that I get a better impression of what people already know about Wikipedia. And I have the advantage that I can show people how I react to them, that I react to every reaction with respect, whether the answer is correct or not, so that people are more likely to be engaged in the following. Thank you. And the next slide, please. So uh, looking at the time, I I, um, I have here some uh, favorite tips of mine because I had the privilege to learn so much about teaching something or presenting something in the past. And one of my tips is, imagine that you are planning for an event where you are going to talk about Wikipedia. And my advice check the media beforehand to see if Wikipedia has been mentioned recently in the news. Maybe there was a newspaper interview with a Wikipedian. And then you can perhaps mention it in your lecture to give relevance uh, to it. Or maybe one of the pa participants has read it and will ask you about it. And I think then it's very useful if you have read the article or the interview, if that is possible. Yes, and there was uh, once a time I had to uh, give a short introduction to Wikipedia for a museum. And beforehand, I was told that the attendees hardly know anything about Wikipedia. So I did the presentation. I finished it and asked if we now can start to edit. And one woman said harshly, no, no, it's not, not necessary. No more questions. We already knew that. We just want to start editing. 
And I was startled. And later I asked the organizer again whether I had an appropriate introduction. And then I was told that indeed, almost all of the participants were beginners except for that one woman. So this is my advice. Talk to the organizer before the event. Talk about the objectives, the target group, and what you are going to do. And then later you will be on the safe side. And the last slide, the last slide please. And at the end of the day, when it comes to lectures and presentations, you have to be flexible. Over a decade ago, I was invited to a symposium in a German city. It was announced as a scientific conference with a senior manager from the Encyclopedia Britannica and a representative from the Brockhaus Publishing House as the other speakers. The invitation came from Akademischer Lexika Dienst, a bookstore, a retailer that sold reference works in this university town. And on the occasion, I made sure that my brother, who was studying in the city at the time, was also allowed to come. A free meal in a fine restaurant, no student would know to that. The scientific conference with 50 participants turned out to be a party for the shop owner who was retiring. He and a few friends had founded the business many years ago when they were still students, and the scientific lectures were actually personal lookbacks at the business, and eventually a co-founder even picked up a guitar, and then these older gentlemen sang a good-natured mocking song about the owner based on an old German pop song. My brother watched the whole thing in bewilderment, and I said to him quietly, here you see the customs of the traditional German middle class, which is waning away just like the encyclopedia sales of that friendly gentleman over there. Enjoy it while it still exists. My last paragraph. So was it a waste of time for me? No, we had a nice evening, great food, a fee for me. I met my brother again, and I learned the lesson that you have to be flexible. So I cut down on the scientific stuff and told more anecdotes about Wikipedia instead. Comedy sticks better than facts anyway. Everyone was happy, but to be clear in the following, I did not specialize in retirement party gigs either. So thank you. Last slide. This was a... A couple of ideas what you can do and consider when it comes to presenting Wikipedia, and maybe you are interested in my YouTube channel. Thank you again. And uh, I, I think we have one minute for questions or something like that. I think we have to do collective questions. Nicola, am I right? Hello? Yes, yes. yes. Yes, yes, we do. We do questioning and answering we'll at the question. end of the. Yes, yes. wonderful. Yes, uh, I can say, uh, share the slides. It's everything free knowledge licensed, you know, and uh, I'm happy. What's coming next in this meeting? So thank you again. Wow, that's so very interesting. Now we know how to present, uh, present and teach Wikipedia without a workshop using the media format of small talk. That's very interesting. I love Thanks a lot. Good. So let's let's try let's try what Zico has taught us now by participating in a small game. You know Zico used quiz. We are going to use we are going to do game now. Bookie. Okay, okay, sorry, Salish. Please, can you share this next slide? Um, uh, Bukulik, do you want to take take over the slides now? Okay. okay, I can try, just that my internet isn't really strong. Well, let me just try to take over. Trying to share my screen now. Okay, uh, yeah. Yes, we are now at the icebreaker, Madam Obi, over to you. Okay. So we're going to do a game. In just two words, 
what does Edu Wiki Knowledge Showcase means to you? We're using the jam box. Please, can you put the link on the chat uh, box, please, so that they can use it? Okay. You can no, also this. use the chat. You can also use the chat uh, in case uh, you are not you are unable to access the Jamboard. Yes, you can use the chat box to write your answers in case you can access it. So we are waiting. We have just five minutes for this. Hello, Zika. You're answering the second question. This is the first one. In two words, what does Edu Wiki Knowledge Showcase mean to you? Okay, so uh, we are waiting for more people to drop comments on the Jamboard, and you can also do well to drop your comments in the chat. So I want you to also maybe think about uh, the small talk that um, uh, Zico had shared about. So maybe you could um, think about the small talk and think of how you want to respond in two ways. If you are being asked, what is EduWiki Knowledge Showcase? Thank you. I'm seeing some comments already. I see exchanging your experience, and I'll be putting that uh, in the Jamboard. I will just share the link to the Jamboard again. I'm dropping it in the chat again for those who missed the link when I share. Okay, yeah, thank you, Zico. I Love your comments. Come to the showcase. It is mixed bag, and something will be interesting for you anyway. Yeah, thanks. That's and nice. I really did. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you for everyone who have dropped comments. Uh, yep. It's so good to see that. Yeah. Okay. Sharing and learning inputs are nice people. Wow. Education is not limited to classroom. Beautiful. Sharing experiences. Nice. Shared knowledge to know innovative education projects. Nice. To know best practices, good. How to use Wiki in schools, nice. Interesting. Okay, I think our five minutes is up. Hello, Buki, am I correct? Um, I think uh, Mr. Jeremiah should be able to okay. drop that in the chat. However, I think we can just proceed to the next agenda. Thank you. Okay. Kemi, are you around? 
Yes, I'm here. Okay. So um, is Jeremiah um the first speaker? We don't know if he's still on the call, so that um he can um take over his presentation. If not, then we move to the third speaker. The um Al Asam Mohammed. If he's not on the call, then we move to the third speaker. Bruno Brando. Is she on the call? here oh okay she's a brazilian and historian she's first edited wikipedia in 2021 and the marketing and digital media coordinator at the history theory project on weekends so and um our she'll be presenting our presentation is going to cover our experience with wikipedia for university professors mini course detailing its execution and outcomes during it's run from July to August, 2023. So Bruno, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know, do I have to share the presentation? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I just realized that I forgot one word here. It's Project Mice Experience with the mini course Wikipedia for University Professors. So sorry, guys, but you can pass the, the slide, please. So, first of all, I'd like to, to thank you for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be here with so much people that is interested in this, this topic, education, Wikipedia, and Wikimedia. My name is Bruna Grando. I am a Brazilian historian, and I'm part of an amazing team that has been working since, since 2022 to make Wikipedia and other open access projects, more diverse, inclusive, and equitable spaces. This is my team. We are now 10 people, which is a lot, but last year we were five, which wasn't so much. So yeah, uh, our project is called My Teoria da Historia na Wiki, or More Theor Theory of History on Week, founded by the Wikimedia Foundation, our initiative aims to aims to stimulate the engagement and activity of historians on platforms managed by the Wikimedia Foundation, focusing on open science and the construction of collective and collaborative knowledge. We focus on expanding the debate on topics related to gender, sexuality, race, and the epistemologies of the global south, and especially in the in the educational aspect of it. Can you pass, please? In 2023, we facilitated our mini course, which is called Wikipedia for University Professors, adapted for the Portuguese speaking contest from Wikipuentes, which is a course by Wikimedia Argentina. The mini course took place during the event my Povos Originários in Tira de Historia na Week, which focused on indigenous uh, communities of Brazil and other contexts. But yeah, the mini course happened during this uh, event between July and August 20, uh, 2023. The mini course had several goals, with the main one being to encourage university professors to participate in Wikimedia projects, especially Wikipedia, Wikidata, and Wikimedia Commons. It aimed to make participants reflect on the importance of literacy and digital citizenship in building free and collaborative knowledge for broad audiences. We also aimed to facilitate the use of these platforms as teaching and learning tools at universities and to drive the creation of a specialized contest in, in a lot of areas. Uh, the course, so the structure of the course. The course comprised the four asynchronous modules accessible via the Moodle platform, each in spanning four hours and featuring mandatory activities. Additionally, participants engaged in three synchronous meetings throughout the duration of the mini course. Two university professors who are also active Wikimedians, Flavia Varela, uh, she is our coordinator, and Fatima de Souza, 
provided valuable feedbacks to the participants. Furthermore, graduates were offered up to three months of dedicated support to implement Wikimedia projects uh, within their educational settings. Can you pause this slide, please? Uh, sorry, I, 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 thought, I think I forgot to, <laughs> to say to pass one time. Can you, can you pass one more time? Sorry. Yeah. In this edition, we had uh, 45 people enrolled in the mini course with 18 participating at least one synchronous activity or completing one or more module activities. Same professor comprising 22% 20, of the subscribers successfully completed the program. Since the, conclu the conclusion of the mini course, we have been providing support to the professors who completed activity. And here we have pictures of five of them. Professor Elena Periciari, Professor Eugenia Cabral, Professor Benicio Siqueira, Professor Marcelo Abreu, and Professor Silvia de Jesus. Starting soon, we will also have Professor Ma Marta Uloa and Professor Mariana Silveira engaging in activities with Wikipedia in their educational context. context. Can you pass, please? For professors who completed support for one semester, we have developed what we called Wikimedia Professor Journey. These programs help them become more independent in using Wikipedia and other projects in the university, taking an active role in managing activities, facilitating workshops, providing feedbacks on tasks to assume an independent role in conducting and planning long-term activities. And we, we thought it uh, in the span of three semesters. Uh, can you pause, please? Yeah. So just to conclude my presentation, I want to highlight that in the next month, we will offer a second edition of the mini course, which will take place between April and May. It will now be an independent activity, not a part in, of an event anymore. And today we have already 50 subscribers, but the, the, the subscribers will last until uh, the, the end of the month. And we are very excited uh, and we hope to continue stimulating the participation of professors in, in Wikipedia, as well as their students and the academic community in general, especially people from marginalized groups such as women, LGBTA plus individuals, black people, indigenous people and others. And that's it. Thanks. I hope I don't, I don't talk to too much. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And my English is really rusty right now, so yeah. Don't worry, we understand what you're saying. <laughs> uh, nice, nice. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> okay, thank you so, thank much. You so much. Um, without uh, without wasting our time, our fourth speaker is a Nigerian, Jeremiah Ogulabo. He's a a, a librarian and information specialist. He's also a co-founder of Portacot Wikimedia Hub. He's going to talk about um, historical documentation that happened in March consigning uh, Bayalsa and Alquaibon history right at home. If Jeremiah is here, please take over. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be But here. please speak up. Okay. Speak up. Your your volume okay. is low. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. I'm glad to be on the call this evening. Uh, um, I want to talk about the projects we had uh, early this year, uh, early March between January to March. And the title of the project was uh, Aquaibom and Baesa History Right at Dawn. The idea behind the project was to address the knowledge and content gaps on 
on Wikipedia in respect to these two states, Aquaiman State and Baeta State in Nigeria. These are states in Niger Delta region of Nigeria, and we observe that uh, content and information about them on Wikipedia specifically was very low and poor. So we decided to move out and look at a way of improving this content. Can, we, can I get the next slide? Okay, these are the aims of the project. Uh, the aims of the project uh, address the systematic bias. Systematic bias in terms of the content. Uh, we notice that the contents are very poor. So that's one of the aims which we set out to do in respect to that project. And also we looked at uh, recruiting and training new editors because these states, are, we could liken them as virgin states in the southern part of Nigeria in respect to Wikipedia and Wikimedia project. Uh, we literally had no active community in them. So we looked at uh, raising up a community of editors. And also, another aim of the project looked at organizing a data tone and write a tone to fill these spaces, these content spaces, in respect to this day. Because uh, if the spaces are not properly filled, we cannot be able to properly document the history of the people in respect to these states. The next slide, please. Okay, at the end of the project, uh, it lasted for roughly three months. At the end of the writer tones and the editor tones and the online training, we were able to create a community of enthusiastic Wikipedians, uh, enthusiastic in the sense that people that were ready to contribute, uh, not just attend training, but they were excited about everything and uh, were able to contribute on Wikipedia. Our target was uh, 80 editors, new editors. By the end of the day, we were able to get 90 new editors. We joined, and not just joining, they were able to contribute actively. They were able to document uh, their places, their tribes, their locations. And also, at the end of the project, we realized that over 300 articles in respect to these two states were improved, and some were also created which was a very great plus to us because when we drew out our plan for the project, we were not looking at achieving so much. But at the end of the day, we found out that because of the enthusiasm of the Wikipedians, we were able to achieve that. And also we were able to make uploads of over 500 uh, content on Wikimedia Commons. And all of these body right at all, the history at all, and the trainings and the body online and the physical training were able to help us document the history of these people. And some of them, in respect to one of, in one of the states, I think that is Aquaribo State, when I was uh, taking the training, I threw a question to the people and I was like, oh, uh, where are you from? Okay, somebody, the guy gave me where he was from. I said, can you do a search, a Google search, to see if uh, somebody can be able to read about where you are from. And when he said, you found out that his place and his location was uh, invisible, so to say. It was not active on the what why boy so he used the training to document that and also improve the content so at the end of the day we were able to achieve our goal which is to document history through the creation of content on wikipedia that were related to the project the next slide please all of these did not come without its challenges next slide please okay uh, in respect to the training and the project, we had some challenges. Uh, if you are conversant with uh, organizing projects and events on the wiki space over here in uh, Nigeria, we always have this issue of IP address block uh, in respect to creating accounts. Sometimes because of the epileptic network issues, just like we're having now for some days, it's been crazy here in Nigeria due to some activities in the in the sea according to the technicians so both nigeria and some african countries we have had issues with network so during the training we experienced that some persons their ip were just blocked uh, because of unstable network and all of that another challenge is that uh, in respect to reliable sources we found it difficult to really create all we wanted to create because as a, as an active 
Wikipedia and, and somebody that is conversant with Wiki, before you create an article, you have to ensure that you have reliable sources in the internet. But when we checked, we found out that uh, because of the location and because of less uh, documentation, there were poor sources. So it limited our training and limited the contribution of the participants. And also the high cost of internet. Uh, we thank the foundation. The foundation was able to provide support, but still, uh, the support was not fully enough, but we were still able to find our way around it. Our participants were able to contribute. They contributed to the level they could. And at the end of the day, uh, we were able to achieve our success, our project outcome. So I think uh, in respect to documenting history, Wikipedia can be used as a tool to document history. When you have identified a space, uh, when you have identified a space, maybe uh, a tribe, a language, a location that you want to work on, you can now use true wiki training to document that history and document what you need to know. Thank you very much. If you have any question, uh, this is my username, user global, and my colleague for the training for the project is a user Omaradon. Thanks for listening. Wow. Thank you very, very much. Nice. I've always loved historians. They will give you facts and tell you stories as if you're looking at, you're watching a movie. Thank you, Jeremiah. Okay. Okay, Kemi, go ahead. Okay, so um, thank you, Jeremiah, once again. And um, our next speaker, the fifth speaker is Nikos Nikomitros, I hope I pronounced the name well. Uh, okay, yes, you did well, yes, the... yes. Okay, thank you very much. He's a member of the Wikimedia Community User Group Greece and the CEE Youth Group. So his presentation is going to is focusing on conducting the first physical outreach program at the School of Philosophy, NKUA University. So over to you, Nikos. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, this uh, presentation is uh, covering about the, the experiences from my, my first outreach project in the uh, Athens University, which is uh, also the name the National Competition University of Athens. That's why I say NKUA. It's uh, the same thing. Uh, the following is intending to present my experiences uh, uh, from um, the outreach my university, which uh, was the first physical outreach in. Uh, uh, the School of Philosophy in Athens, which has uh, thousands of students in philosophy, in history, where I study, uh, in psychology, in uh, philology, in uh, and the various foreign languages, but uh, never was a Wikimedia program uh, in gathering the students of this uh, school. Here we're going to present uh, how it began, how it went, its outcomes, and uh, the experiences uh, of founding a Wiki Club, which uh, is my main target here regarding my Wikimedia, Wikimedia ventures in my university, as I have learned from my personal experience and they already gained knowledge exchange with other Wikimedians. Uh, next slide. Uh, preparing an outreach program is uh, a significant process and it takes uh, a considerable amount of time. Even if uh, you are chairing a massive outreach program of uh, many tens of people or a more uh, smaller uh, outreach program, or the, for example, this uh, that I did for students of the French uh, language uh, uh, department of my university, as uh, there was a Wikimedia professor there, Eleni Jaffa, and I could uh, uh, make contact with her and uh, do my first program there. Uh, we had, uh, despite here that there was a very good ally here to conduct our program, we still had a lot of uh, challenges to uh, fill. We had made, we had to make a planning how much students we would uh, have. Uh, how much students will participate is significant because uh, it depends, uh, because you have to know about their level of knowledge in Wikipedia, their uh, demands, their needs uh, to support them, and uh, etc. Decide the materials after you have to decide the uh, materials for the presentation. Uh, for example, you want to make people that will learn uh, to read Wikimedia articles and at all. Uh, or you want to make uh, people uh, that will 
become comedians. We know how the movement works, how uh, the movement uh, is uh, operating in general to become uh, full-fledged uh, members of the uh, movement. This is a very good uh, uh, and very significant part of the outreach program because it, define, it defines uh, the entire uh, material of this. It, so if you want to make them just editors uh, or you want to make them well connected to the movement, it depends on how much stuff you will uh, put in your presentation. You have uh, to negotiate with uh, the professor and the authorities when your program is going to take happen to, to take place because universities is a highly dynamic place and uh, the curriculum is also very important to be covered. You know the academic curriculum of the program of the uh, of the it's a course, so uh, you have to uh, agree with the professor when and how much uh, lessons will be spent on uh, doing this Wikimedia uh, outreach program. Uh, you have also to define a plan how to motivate your uh, students, how to ensure that at least one or two will continue to contribute in Wikimedia projects and after the outreach program is uh, completed. Because one main challenge in every outreach program in university and schools and everywhere is uh, that after they complete the outreach program that you are uh, uh, chairing or co-chairing that you are doing, that many of most of them will uh, simply stop contributing. Uh, then you have to define the list uh, with your partner, which articles will be improved, which articles will be made, and uh, etc. Uh, so the process, as I explained, is uh, a bit uh, time-killing, but uh, in the end, it will be very demanding and will make uh, you, the students, and the partner very proud. Next slide. Uh, our outcomes was uh, that almost 20 new articles about French women and uh, writers and journalists and so on, because uh, my partner was from the French uh, language department, uh, and I'm a history student, uh, is that we worked uh, mostly on France. Uh, we had approximately 25 to 30 new editors uh, new students in pro in, that were immersed in Wikimedia. Uh, because uh, Mrs. Uh, Ziava had worked earlier with uh, another Wikimedian, but uh, with online activities uh, the previous year, uh, there was a student here that could help us uh, and to present Wikimedia as well, and also show how Wikimedia works for the students. People uh, that participated there, which were mostly women and also some men, uh, learned uh, how to contribute to Wikimedia, how it will be the projects, how they function, how every, how they are working, and how the things so goes on. Uh, editors who are uh, mostly women, which is a very significant uh, milestone, because uh, uh, working on improving the coverage and the presence of women in Wikimedia is a never-ending race that we must uh, fulfill. It is a very significant. Uh, it's a very significant uh, uh, thing here to note. One person which participated in my program uh, is now an active Wikimedian and uh, it, she helps me to uh, with my various uh, programs in the university. As uh, we are planning in this spring various uh, educational activities in collaboration with the authority of the School of Philosophy so that we can have uh, official support and make uh, the program, make my school, wiki club a uh, real wiki club with really lots of people. Uh, uh, next slide. Uh, practice, what we learned is a uh, practical experience, experience to organize, manage, and run Wikimedia outreach event. Often, young people don't see Wikimedia as a good hobby because many of them see how uh, some things generate money or uh, uh, how does help them to uh, with their targets in university, for example, to graduate as fast as possible and especially to go to a postgraduate program. Connecting Wikimedia with games and the help uh, but also Wikimedia values plays a various uh, plays a vital role to motivate your student, which means the Wikimedia values about volunteerism, the free knowledge, and all all these things. The future of the movement relies on us. So, giving special emphasis on the movement in an outreach program is significant in order to encourage them and make them future ambassadors of the movement, so that uh, we have new people that will have a full understanding of the Wikimedia movement and. Uh, how the Wikimedia system is operating. Uh, explaining the importance of refining uh, your national language and making knowledge accessible to others. 
and connect with community developers as a open source software. Teach them how Wikimedia can change uh, their personal life to the better. How uh, Wikimedia, uh, being Wikimedia, improves uh, themselves in uh, various ways. And technical, and how, and the experience about how uh, we can solve technical problems like IP address blocking during uh, Wikimedia outreach programs. This is what uh, the lessons that I learned and the way I conducted my outreach program. Uh, next slide. The experience is that uh, I have a kind uh, from uh, trying to make my own GitHub University are the following. Before you get the official collaboration with authority, a good uh, step to uh, drive your uh, association to the next level and uh, generally to ensure uh, more the vitality of the club in the long term, in the long run, you have to encourage uh, uh, your partners to continue their community training. Uh, you have to promote your club in the group sets of your uh, association in order to make uh, your uh, uh, association more known in the students and general to encourage the more interest. Conduct online lessons before you do official trainings with uh, professors and uh, various university places. You, you have to keep uh, and your club alive and you have to also promote Wikimedia with online classes outside the, uh, the school program, regularly. You need at least uh, three or four members uh, so that you have a good presentation from university and generally from various students to generally make things growing. You have to collaborate with your uh, uh, with other clubs. Uh, uh, sorry, give me a minute. Uh, forcing uh, collaboration with other clubs. Uh, it's very significant to make knowledge exchange, to motivate your students and uh, uh, partners with uh, writing articles about uh, uh, other countries, etc. Uh, forcing partnership with the school's authority is uh, significant because uh, they are liberal line. They will provide you the place to outreach, promotion in their pages, official support, and they're able to motivate people to participate, to participate because it will look more official and uh, sanctioned. Also, in the sense that uh, this uh, outreach event is reaching uh, all the university school. And people from various disciplines will uh, uh, follow your club and contribute. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a photo uh, from the first lesson. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to present, and it was really a great uh, experience presenting uh, my uh, experience. I hope here that uh, it was useful for you. Thank you, Nikos, for the presentation. That was a beautiful one. I thought um, we only had this um, challenges of trying to connect the youth with the foundation here in Nigeria. So it means that um, our challenges are like oh everywhere. So it means we still all need to look at it together holistically on how to bring more youth to the foundation. Thank you for the presentation. We really appreciate it. So, so our next uh, presentation. Thank yeah, thank you. So our next presentation, we're going to have um, our icebreaker. Uh, just um, we are going to be talking about um, them. Please, can we put the link of the um, Jamboard? So on the screen is um, what Wikimedia projects never ceased to amaze you while you were working on it. So what project did you work on and then um, you liked? You, you know, you think about it and they're like, wow, I know mine. I'm going to add mine to the um to the jam board. You can add it. You can put it in the chat if you can access the jam board. I think the link to the jam board is already in the chat. So we just have five minutes for this um icebreaker before the next speaker. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Madam Kemi, for moderating this. Um, so if you're just um, joining, uh, the question is very simple. Oops, I think someone um, just... Okay, I can see somebody trying to move around uh, the uh, question on the icebreaker. So it's very simple. What Wikimedia projects never cease to amaze you while working on it? So I, 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 while reading uh, the comments on the Jamboard, I see some, uh, someone said Wikipedia is always an amazing project. 
and the desire to bring free knowledge and promote the values to other people is always great. And that's something I find very interesting. And there's another comment that says, uh, Wikidata, it's amazing how computer language and human connect together. Yeah, that's very, like, something very amazing. And uh, please, um, you can do well to uh, drop your comments in the chats if you are unable to use uh, the Jamboard. Um, I will just be copying that. I see someone said uh, Luxembourgish Wikipedia. That's from Zico. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I will just be adding some, some um, these comments in the on the Jamboard. So somebody said, I love wiki quotes. It's amazing to see how everyone on this call um, have identified with a particular uh, Wikimedia project. And I really want to see the comments about the wiki data. I think it got deleted. Um, if you could share that again, I can just help you uh, post it on the Jamboard. Yeah. Okay. Over to you now. Okay, so um, I think we still have more comments on the jam board. Um, there's climate change, and I think there are so, we have more comments in the chat as well. Someone said Wikipedia is always my best anytime, anywhere, anyhow. Another said Wikidata is amazing. I love it. Um. Okay. Then. So I I think we are still waiting for more people to add their thoughts on on the question. We have um less than a minute to go. Timekeeper, how many minutes do we have left to do this? One minute. Sorry. A minute. A minute. A Minute. Minute. Oh. Okay, we have a minute left. Okay, yeah. another person said, I love creating and editing co content on Wikipedia. That's fantastic. Okay, so, we so I just a have a comment. Sorry to cut in. Somebody said okay. climate change. And I'm wondering yes. how uh, you're thinking about the Wikimedia projects. And uh, while your response is climate change, I think it would be nice to hear from you or you can just maybe drop comments in the chat. Because um, when we say uh, Wikimedia projects, we're actually referring to the websites that we use to promote or create visibility for, for uh, this topic of impact. Thank you. So um, thank you everyone for um, joining the icebreaker. So we have to move to the next um, speaker. Over to you, Madam Obi. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I love this group. We are all participating and it's interesting. So our next speaker is a Tanzanian. Please, Madam Obi, can you speak out? Okay, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes. Sure. So our next speaker is a Tanzanian and Swahili Wikimedia administ Wikipedia administrator. He's going to talk on Kiwis, an app designed for schools that will help provide offline access to Wikimedia, to Wikimedia resources. That's what is going to take us through. And this uh, Kiwis, according to his topic, it's a tool that will improve quality of teaching, uh, valuable 
educational content for students, promoting valuable educational content for students in as much as enabling students to assess varieties of quality content on the Wikipedia space. So Husseini, if you are around, please take it over from here. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Hussein Issa. I'm from Tanzania. And uh, today I'll be presenting about QX and the impact of QX for schools here in Tanzania. I have shared the the, the slides more video. Yeah, should I play? Uh, yeah. I'm currently on the slide that has the video. Yeah, you can play it. Okay, please just let me know if you can hear. I would like to see comments in the chat or you can just interrupt the video. Hello, guys. My name is Hussein Issa. And I'll be the next presenter in this session. And here's my presentation. Um, unlocking education with QX for schools, bridging the digital divide in Tanzania. QX for school is a groundbreaking initiative aimed at transforming education access in schools by providing offline access to Wikimedia resources. In this presentation, we'll explore the innovative approach of QX for schools and its impact on education outcomes in African schools. QX is an offline content reader software that allow users to access a wide range of content without any internet connection. This means that a user may surf into the content that is curated and inserted in the QX without any internet connection or bundles. QX offer a user-friendly interface and support various platforms, making it accessible to a diverse range of users. QX can be accessed via Android, Windows, and also devices containing iOS and macOS, also Linux, but also there are some extensions such as Chrome, Firefox, in Microsoft Edge that supports the installation of QX. At last, QX can also be installed in Raspberry Pis. For more information, you can visit qx.org. QX for School is an extension of the QX project, specifically tailored to meet the needs of education institutions. The initiative aims to address the digital divide in education by providing offline access to educational resources, including Wikipedia articles, textbooks, and other educational materials. The implementation of QX in Tanzania involved collaboration with local schools including Kisutu Girls, Ngwani, and Nala Secondary Schools located in Dodoma, Tanzania. The project team installed QX software on school computers and curated ed educational content relevant to Tanzanian curriculum. And this work was done by a team of volunteers who dedicated their time and effort in making sure that uh, the content that will be deployed in the software meets the criteria to be uh, taught or used by students in schools. 
impact and achievements. QX has had a profound impact in education in Tanzania, empowering students and teachers with access to a wealth of knowledge. Students now have the opportunity to explore diverse topics, conduct research, and enhance their learning experiences through offline Wikimedia resources. But also when we visit schools, we also make time to teach the installation and the use of QX to secondary teachers. The training session were conducted to familiarize teachers and students with the QX platform and its features, whereby it will ensure effective utilization of the offline resources. Teacher now have integrated QX into their lesson plans, enriching classroom instruction, and foster a culture of self-directed learning. This means that now students can go to computer labs and open QX, use it for reading or conducting or submitting various assignments. What are our future directions? Looking ahead, QX for Schools aims to expand its reach to more schools across Tanzania, thereby bridging the digital divide and promoting education equity. This year, we plan to reach more schools so as to ensure that QX and its resources will be used in teaching. Sustaining access. The project will continue to engage with local communities and stakeholders to ensure sustainability and scalability. Together, we envision a future where every student in Tanzania has access to quality educational resources through projects of QX for schools. We invite you all to join us in this mission to unlock education with this marvelous software of QX. Whether you're a student, teacher, or education advocate, there are many ways to get involved, from volunteering to spreading awareness. Together, let's harness the power of open knowledge to create a brighter future for Tanzanian students. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hussein, for the beautiful presentation. Um, really appreciate it. And, um, our next um, presenter on the list is um, Dr. Ungozi. Um, is she on the call, please? Dr. Ungozi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you very much. So Dr. Ungozi is a trained librarian, lecturer, researcher, and the founder of Anambra Wikimedia Network. Um, our presentation is going to focus on our presentation is going to focus on the photos upload of Wiki Commons aimed at familiarizing participants with various Wikimedia projects to foster inclusive volunteer engagement. Dr. Ungozi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Kemi. Please, can you all hear me clearly? Yes. Can you hear me? All right. Thank you. Um, Ngozi Pepeshwa Osushuhu um, from Wikimedia Anambra Network of Wikimedia User Group Nigeria. I'm going to present on Say It with a photo, learning a new Wikimedia project. So this is all about um, using other Wikimedia projects as a volunteer to contribute to Wikimedia. So this is all about wiki commons. Like they said, a photo speaks a thousand words. And we all know that not everybody can um, 
can do Wikipedia. Not everybody can do Wikisource. So as there are many Wikimedia projects, Wikicommons is also part of it. Something that someone can do without checking his or her grammar or without you know, being afraid of being um, deleted or blocked. So on this, uh, the aims of this is to offer a new way of contributing to Wikimedia. We recruited new contributors. We improved the capacities of old editors and we uploaded uh, lots and lots of photos. Next, please. Next slide. Now, how did we do it? First of all, we shared invites and um, we had uh, 30 participants from university community and members of Wikimedia Anambra network. We used the um, projector to project the training because it was a training. And they, they, there were two events, one in person and one online. So during the training, we taught the participants how to upload, how to give unique uh, titles to their uploads, how to describe in one line sentence and how to describe fully all these things, all these are thematics in Wikicommons that guide you on uploading your photos so that others can see what activities you've carried out. Now, what we are the outcomes? Like I said, we are 30, seven we are new contributors, 12 contributors have never uploaded before. Taking us back to what I said earlier, there are so many Wikimedia projects that one can indulge in depending on where you find your choice or where you think your interest lies. At the end of the project, 108 photos were uploaded to Commons. And during evaluations, participants found Wikicommons very exciting and relaxing because here they are not afraid of being blocked, or afraid of their, their content being deleted. They found it so um, exciting. And they, you know, because there were categories, it was it is so easy for them to retrieve all their pictures whenever and however they want. Next. Next slide. Now, these are some of the photos you uploaded. Remember, like my topic says, we uh, were watch the pictures we collected we are pictures from cultural events and festivities during the Christmas. So everyone knew <clears throat> they were going to get these pictures during the Christmas break. So we came prepared. So some people attended so many events and the, the first picture, as you can see there, we are the titled women. They were given shift and titled. That was in Onisha community. It is called Iwodo in Igbo language. The second picture is the traditional marriage of Ada Igbo. Then the third one is the masquerade. We call it Mwamu in Igbo language. There are others, but I just um, you know, brought out this story so that you can see the kinds of cultural photos and festivities that we uploaded on in comments. Next. Next slide. Now, what were the challenges and the lessons learned? The challenges we faced, one of them was the internet fluctuations. And you know, when you're uploading to comments or when you're uploading anything, it takes more data. So sometimes during that period, the internet uh, was affecting what we were doing. Again, some participants did not have photos to upload. You know how it is. Some claimed they did not attend any event or they did not you know, go to any cultural event during the Christmas. So while we were uploading, some of them didn't really have pictures. And then you know, some of us were forced
Hello, we can't hear you. Um, yes, I, I may be oh. the network. Sorry about hear. that. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yeah, I'm back. Okay, thank you. All right. So some people did not come with pictures, and those that have pictures, we are forced to give them pictures so that they can, you know, be part of the training. Is she still and on that the was call? also part of, for the fun of it. Yes, I'm back. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can. Please. Um, yes, we okay. can hear you. Can All hear right. You. So what are the lessons learned? We learned from the participants that Wiki Commons is one of the easiest and fastest to learn. Participants feel more relaxed, like I said earlier, and the excitement of learning that they can upload anytime, anywhere. So it's a very good, um, it's a very good aspect, a very good uh, project in Wikimedia where one can always upload from anywhere, from the comfort of your room, from anywhere, whatever activities you carry out, you can easily upload them to Commons with unique um, titles so that they can easily be found. Next. Yeah, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And then I put that photo there because whenever I wear uh, this t-shirt for the um, uh, for reading Wikipedia, I always showcase it. But this is the picture of the training when I facilitated for that uh, activity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ngozi. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. Pictures showcasing uh, the cultural heritage of Nigeria. Fantastic. So over to you, um, Madam Obi. Thank you. OK. Thank you so much for that presentation. Our next speaker and the last speaker is Imelda Brazil. She's from Philippines board member wiki world heritage user group former ewoc you know community specialist program organizer one live one reef and uh, local coordinator reading wikipedia in the classroom wikimedia foundation he's going she's going to present a topic on transitioning from EduWiki community Philippian virtual meetup to in-person meetup. How this, how they carried out this transition. That's what she's going to focus on and how they advocated for Philippians educational initiatives during and after the pandemic. So take it over, Imelda. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Imelda from Digital Beats. I would like to thank everyone for accommodating us uh, to be included in this showcase of uh, projects and programs. So uh, we prepared a less, uh, less than six minute video uh, of our report uh, from 2020 to 2024. Uh, this is a uh, group uh, output. And so I would like, also like to thank my team who are present today, Anthony, Trisha, Angie, Eric, and Jake. Uh, and I hope you enjoy our video and I look for questions later. Thank you. The Wiki Community Philippines is a subgroup of the Wiki Advocates Philippines User Group formed even before the user group itself was officially recognized. This was formed through a rapid grant project that aims to strengthen remote learning in the Philippines through Wikimedia-based projects. In July 2020, a few months into lockdown, the Wiki Community Philippines volunteers formed together to serve as a driving force to promote Wikipedia and Wikimedia-based projects as an alternative learning resource while the Philippine Department of Education transitions from an in-person to a virtual learning setup. From July 2020 to March 2021, we conducted webinars in our closed social group, training in service trainings for teachers, both virtual and in-person amidst the pandemic. 
to promote the use of Wikipedia and how it can be useful in remote teaching and in developing learners Ojo. We were able to involve 197 teachers from across the region and all over the Philippines. We spent the rest of 2021 committing ourselves to the reproduction, distribution, and promotion of the reading Wikipedia in the cluster modules to different public high schools in our province. Statistics showed that there were significant changes in website and page views in our local wiki projects for every visit we made to these schools. In September 2021, when the Wikipedia and Education Industry Group mentorship was piloted, one of our volunteers partnered with Wikimedia to Serbia to design activities that would engage prospective editors coming from the education sector and share with them the aspects of wiki projects that could be incorporated into their teaching methods. A presentation and training on Wikipedia editing and how to use wiki projects for ed education were the outcomes of the collaboration. This was included during the Brigada Pagbasa Orientation Program at 1F Tribunia Memorial High School it was attended by more than 30 public school teachers. Brigada Pagbasa is a readership program of the Department of Education Philippines that seeks to improve the literacy skills of the students. At the end of 2021, we received our first offline Wikipedia powered by Kiwix through the organizers of the Wikigap campaign. With the vision of reaching more communities in remote areas without an internet connection, Kiwix has brought us closer to our hope of making Wikipedia accessible to technologically marginalized communities. In May 2022, through funding support from Art Plus Feminism, we were able to conduct teachers training on Katanduanis Island. It took a total of eight hours to reach the destination, including land and sea travel. They are the first school to receive an offline Wikipedia through this program. Being situated in a coastal area with zero to low data connections, the students and teachers are far from accessing online resources. With the aid of the QX device, where Wikifundi was installed, we were able to provide training on how to contribute to Wikimedia projects, such as adding images, proofreading articles, and even, even adding references. The travel may have consumed a lot of our energy and time, but it was worth the effort to deliver free knowledge to areas such as this. Although we managed to promote the use of Wikipedia in schools remotely, our partner teachers and schools deem it more effective to conduct in-person training to translate Wikipedia knowledge into skills for contributing to this platform. In November 2023, the Wiki Advocates Philippines User Group rolled out the Wiki Learning Project, their newest Edu Wiki initiative. This project aims to support teachers through the use and creation of open educational resources, distribute offline wikis to schools and barangay reading centers, continue training for contributing to the open movement, and pilot a program of capacity building for out of school youth. As of today, EduWiki Community Philippines members and followers have grown to over 100 and are still growing. We maintain a continued partnership with senior high schools within the province to continue training senior high school students. We have certified trainers for reading Wikipedia in the classroom and a continued support from the mentorship program. In the course of four years, through the different EduWiki initiatives, regional education meetings, training of trainers and mentorship brought by Wikipedia and Education User Group, Wikimedia Foundation, and other user groups in the movement, our team was able to survive organizing from virtual platforms to classrooms, from webinars to actual in-person teachers training, implementing one strategy to another, combining different initiatives and contextualizing them when needed. Consistency, commitment, collaboration, and adaptability have kept us growing and learning how to include more diverse communities in using Wikipedia, be it in a formal classroom setup or unconventional learning opportunities. And this is our Edu Wiki story. Looking forward to learning yours. Wow, this is so interesting. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Emilda. It's so nice to see all the beautiful work uh, that you are doing as part of the um, um, EduWiki um, Philippines um, um, community initiatives around education. 
yeah with this uh we've come to the end of uh the edu wiki knowledge showcase celebrating the open education week however remember i said we should keep jotting down all our questions because right about now uh it is time for you to ask all the question remember we had about eight speakers who would speak uh, around uh, different topics, different projects, different initiatives, including how to start a small talk. Whenever you're being asked about what Wikipedia is, and also thinking about the course uh, curriculum, the mini course curriculum that was also uh, carried out, and just thinking about all the discussions we've had earlier, I'll be going over the slide just to remind you about some of this discussion and to also hear your thoughts your comments, your questions for all speakers. Yeah, um, so now I'll just mute while I try to share my uh, screen just to go over the slides again uh, for those who might have missed out of some of the discussions we've had earlier. However, if you have questions, comments, you can also do well to raise your hands uh, while I try to uh, share the slides again, just we glance through the slide. Thank you. Wow, that's a nice one, Zico. Zico said, before my father got internet connection, I used Kiwix to make him a Wikipedia addict. Very interesting. Maybe you teach us how you did that. Okay, um, so out of all the eight speakers, we had seven people speak, um, except for al Asian Mohammed, who was unable to join. Uh, to speak on behalf of the Dagbani group. Uh, we had Zico speak around how you can better present uh, Wikipedia to uh, audience, especially uh, when they are both new, or let's say this audience have also uh, been hearing about Wikipedia, but they would also maybe just like, it's also best to connect with them on a very maybe informal level and helping them really understand and pick interest in um, editing Wikipedia. Yeah, um, so uh, just going on to the third speaker, she spoke on, she presented on uh, her experience um, using Wikipedia for university professors and uh, on developing a mini course. And uh, she also shared around the execution, the planning and also the outcomes of the projects. And it would also be interesting if you have question, maybe you're on the call and you're trying, or you're thinking about engaging professors or lecturers. I think um, Bruna may have like uh, good uh, recommendations for you and you can just do well to raise your hand and ask your question. Okay, uh, with that, I'll, I'll go to the uh, fourth speaker. So the fourth speaker uh, presented on the role of Wikipedia in documenting history and also sharing insights and learnings from uh, the writer thought they did uh, to improve content uh, that relates to uh, this local community in Nigeria, Akwa Ibon and Bayesa. And if you are also on this call, maybe you are thinking of, oh, how can I better engage uh, historians or students that are offering history courses or even the lecturers or teachers? I, I think like this is a, a, a best time to engage Jeremiah and um, gain insights on how you can uh, implement this uh, in your local communities. So moving on, we also had... Uh, we also had uh, Nikos, uh, who um, shared his experience and insight from conducting the, his first uh, physical outreach program at the School of Philosophy. And I also like the fact that he gave like a breakdown on some of the things that you can also do 
uh, based on his learning from um, holding this first physical outreach program. And if you have question, uh, just like I've um, emphasized, uh, if you have question for Nikos, I think it would also be a great time uh, to just do well to raise up your hand and ask. However, if there are no questions, I'll just move on to the next presenter. Yeah, so um, uh, we had uh, the sixth speaker who spoke on uh, the key weeks for school projects that was carried out in Tanzania. And it was very interesting to see how uh, the project implementation played out and also the outcomes and also thinking about uh, sustainability and the next steps uh, to improve uh, projects around providing offline uh, accessibility to Wikipedia and other uh, Wikimedia projects, including other open knowledge projects. Uh, for school students, especially for those of us that are in Africa and some other places that uh, may be affected by uh, internet accessibility, especially now that we are facing uh, internet outage in most parts of Africa. So if you have a question, you want to implement Kiwik for School uh, program in your community, uh, I think uh, Useni, uh, if I pronounce that way, Usain, Isa would be very much uh, glad to respond to your questions, comments. And then, uh, yeah, I see a comment in the chats. Yeah, so John, he said, we in Colombia have been used to working with our own offline called Red Local Chimera. Uh, John, would you like to speak more on this? Uh, hi, Bukola. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm connected for, uh, really late because uh, I have not uh, seen the link, but uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, it's just uh, uh, it's a mechanism for using Wikipedia offline. Uh, you can use at the different uh, uh, rural area and no connectivity uh, schools, and it's really almost cheap. The only um, infrastructure that you need is a computer with the windows, the base, uh, it is based on windows and a couple of of, um, of drives with uh, 50 uh, gigabytes and it, it is all. You don't need anything more than that. Um, and we use right here in La Guajira, it's a big desert uh, far away from from the the center of of the the country, um, it's just like that. I don't know if it it, it works for you, Bukola. I'm, I'm really uh, glad to see you again. Yeah, thank you, John, for sharing about what uh how this could help people. And I think uh, most people on the call would really like to explore this and see if it's uh, possible to also adopt it in other local community. Thank you, John, for speaking on that. It was so nice to also see you in person, uh, virtually. Yeah. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, Nicola. <laughs> Thank you very much yeah. for sharing the link with me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, so uh, right about now, I'll just uh, also uh, give you a summary on the seventh speaker, Dr. Ngozi Oz Ozochuku. Uh, would uh, share on a uh, project tag, say it with a photo, and uh, it provides insight into photo uploads on Wiki Commons, uh, showcasing uh, the culture uh, and also uh, tradition uh, from our community. So it was so very interesting to see those beautiful pictures. I just want to quickly scroll to the pictures again. Uh, it was so um, beautiful, like seeing uh, the traditional attire on the women and also seeing the masquerades uh, for the Mawu festival and seeing the chieftaincy title, seeing how women dress uh, for chieftaincy title in a local community. Yeah, so I'll just be going over the chat to see if we have any comments. Okay, um, Nico said La Gujira is the center of why are you speaking for me? I think he's responding to uh, yeah, uh, what John shared. And uh, he said, one interesting Native American community. Well, interesting to know that. And then uh, from here, we move on to Imelda, where she shared about 
all the activities they've been carrying out and also showing us how uh, the Wiki Advocates Filipinis Educational Initiative uh, transformed uh, from being, uh, from how it used to look like during the pandemic to uh, what it now looks like, engaging teachers and students physically and even traveling and spending up to eight hours. Wow, that's really interesting to know. And thank you, Imelda and the Wiki Advocates Filipinos for all you do. Now, uh, this has been everything we have shared today on the call. And we are currently on the Q&A for speakers and interactive discussion. And if you would like to maybe just share, share some uh, um, some quick uh, updates, recommendation, or just send a shout out to the speakers. I think it would be nice to also hear from our participants how you feel uh, getting to learn about all, all this beautiful, brilliant initiative that has been shared. Yes, Hello everyone. Mute and, okay, somebody's okay. good evening. My name is Evelyn. Uh, speaking from Nigeria, I have had a very nice um, section this evening. Although my battery sent me out, I was able to power it from power bank. Nigeria issue, so I enjoyed all these um, presentations and I've learned a lot. But I would like to know more about this kiwis. Because uh, online is a problem over here, sometimes in Nigeria. I don't know much about it. At the same time, I would like to share some of my experiences. Thanks to Obi, who introduced me to Wikipedia. I learned a lot participating in most of the activities. The first one, reading Wikipedia in the classroom, where I learned a lot about how to prepare lesson plan and uh, how to teach the students better, to let them know how to use the hyperlinks and all. Then I was able to join the Wiki for Senior Citizens where we were taught a lot of things. I also enjoyed uploading videos and pictures on Wiki Commons. It has been a very nice um, journey into Wikipedia and uh, Wikimedia projects. I love, if you go to Wiki, Wiki Commons, you see a lots and lots of pictures I have mm -hmm. uploaded there and um, it's helping me a lot. I didn't know anything about Wikipedia until I come into it and I've learned a lot and I'm able to impart my students well. Thank you. I would really like to know about more on Wikis, uh, Kiwis. Thank you very okay. much. Yeah, thank you, Evelyn. It's good to hear about how you came into the EduWiki community. And uh, many thanks to uh, the certified trainers of Reading Wikipedia uh, around the globe who are also doing amazing work, recruiting more teachers, exposing them to OER, using Wikipedia as the learning tool. Now, uh, I would um, like, although we have very limited time, so I would not be able to speak more on that. However, we have Usaini on the call and you may want to connect with Usaini. And also we have had a um, series of trainings previously, uh, which was um, coordinated by OFWA, where they trained, uh, where they uh, raised mentors, people who would like to implement Kiwiks for School projects in their uh, various community. So I may link you up with um, Ruby, or uh, somebody, someone from Ofwa. However, I think since um, Usain Issa is on the call, uh, he can drop his email address in the chats and you can connect through there. And uh, with this, uh, we've come to the end of this session. Uh, congratulations, everyone. I want to see the stickers. Thank you for being part of this EduWiki uh, Knowledge Showcase, celebrating the Open Education Week in our own time and uh, with this i just want to say thank you and uh, your participation has been really insightful it's been interesting to see all your showcase and we hope to see more of your eduwiki projects and learn from your experience in our next um, showcase and with this i just want to also announce that uh, we are currently looking uh, for bidders uh, affiliates um, user groups 
who would like to host the next Edu Wiki conference in 2025. And if you think uh, that you would like to host everyone on this call, including those who were unable to join this call, I think uh, this is a call for you. I can drop the link to uh, the uh, bidding um, form in the chat. Uh, so we would like to host an Edu Wiki uh, conference 2025 and please, we want to see everyone. We want to see, we want to uh, meet in person in 2025 and we can only do it collectively. So thank you all so much for being part of this showcase. Uh, it's been so exciting, interesting to have everyone on this call. And uh, before we go, I would like us to take a group photo. So if you don't mind, if you would like to, uh, if you like us to feature your faces in our diff blog, and um, also on our social media platform. Uh, so uh, we have a Facebook group for those who are just joining. Uh, you can do well to follow us on Facebook, Wikipedia Plus Education, uh, user group on Facebook. And we also have a meta page for those people who have not been interacting with us previously. Please do well to go to our meta page. Always uh, do well to follow all of our events, our activities. And we also have a Telegram group. I do not have access to that Telegram group now. However, maybe someone on the call can share that. And with this, I just want you to turn on your wiki faces for a wiki shot after the count of three. Okay, so I'll be taking uh, some wiki shots. One, two, three, four, wiki style. Yeah. Okay, another wiki shot, final shot, just in case uh, maybe your wiki face is wearing those, uh, wasn't so uh uh placed rightly in the right proportion so it would be nice for you to take another shot one two three four uh wiki smile wiki ends okay thank you all so much it's been a very interesting session i hope to see you uh some other time when we have the next um ed wiki knowledge showcase bye bye and do enjoy the rest of your weekend you can do well so mute to speak and uh, Sila should just stop recording.